<laughs> ah. Hello, I'm Dr. Sue Mortar of Mortar Institute for Bioenergetics, where we bridge science, spirit, and human possibility. And I am here in Indianapolis at our summer healing retreat with an amazing group of people. We have some of the people that have been in the course for work for quite some time with us, and some people that have been in the course work for a little time with us, and some people that I'm meeting for the first time. And let me hear from the people I'm meeting for the first time. Yeah, you hear? Look at this. Oh, it's pretty crazy. And then let me hear from the rest of you old fogies. Uh, <laughs> they're not really old, they're just fogies. And, and so we're here at the healing retreat and we're talking about some really deep and rich things. And I thought that as part of the short answer, we would kind of just bring you in to what we're doing here just a little bit and give you a little taste of that. But first I want to just share with you a couple of things that are coming up for Mortar Institute and uh, different places that I'll be speaking and things that are happening just so you can stay tuned in. Now I have a whole sheet of them here that I'm supposed to say, but I'm only going to say a few of them. And then you'll have to tune in next time, I guess, to hear the rest of them. Um, so we have uh, conscious leaderships, uh, service from the soul uh, that we are doing. A, it's a webinar and we've already had one course, but there are two more courses. And, and so they wanted me to announce that if you wanted to still come into that, that you could. And it's, it's truly about uh, learning how to be in service in the world uh, with consciousness and how to refine that entire, uh, oh no, this isn't, I'm, I'm totally talking about the wrong thing. Uh, never mind. Okay. Just forget everything I said. Um, <laughs> what that is, though, I'm gonna, it just has a different name, okay? And it's called Polishing Your Purpose. See, you write these things down and I can't function. I, I function better with no notes. Okay, so Polishing Your Purpose is a webinar that's a three webinar, three class webinar, and we've had one. Um, of those courses and we still have two more of them coming and so if you missed out on being able to sign up for that you can still sign up and listen to the recording of the first one and then catch the next two live webinars from where you are and be able to ask you know questions and have exchanges again and it's about polishing your purpose on the planet what it is how to find it how to refine it and how to action from that place so something that I'm I'm very excited about and going to be doing more of out in the future uh, I have lots of new ideas that I'm that are coming coming through that I'm supposed to be uh, living into, and I'll be inviting you into those as they come. One of them is what I started to tell you about, thinking that it was called something else, and it's called conscious leadership. And that's something that we're going to be doing in, in conjunction with the book release of the paperback book next spring. So the dates of it are April 17th through the 19th, and it includes... Um, all kinds of ideas about how to be in service. We have lots of people that want to be practitioners or that are practitioners, people that are in our Body Awake program and want to become yoga teachers that are out there in the world, and people that are energy codes facilitators and trainers and master trainers, all of which are really looking to refine their ability to express themselves in the world and learn how to bring people to you, to your workshops and to your classes, etc. So Conscious Leadership in LA is all about that next spring. So I just wanted to let you know about that. I'll also be speaking very soon at the Global Gathering. It's in Phoenix, Arizona. It's with Panash Desai. Invited me to come and speak with some other speakers, and I'll be there August 23rd through the 22nd. And uh, likewise, uh, something that is uh, very near and dear to my heart, level three of our coursework. So those of you that are alumni, you want to plug in and get back into level three this year. We have some very deep, rich um, circuit building practices that I'm bringing forward next month. And so you might want to think about that. And, um, and anyone else who hasn't taken level three and would like to, that's coming up and we have a few spaces in that left. We also have the Body Awake Yoga Retreat, and this is the last announcement I'm going to make, um, except for the one after that that I'm going to say. Um, and the Body Awake Yoga Retreat is here in Indianapolis, and it's in November, and it's November 17th through the 21st. And and here's the deal about that. If you don't want to become a yoga teacher, but you really love the yoga that we're doing in Body Awake Yoga in our coursework, the yoga retreat is, is about that. It is about you learning all the different poses and how to anchor your consciousness in the core of your body while you're doing the asana, while you're in that pose, so that it breaks through the blockages and builds new circuits and allows you to have the flow of energy in your life that, of course, leads to vitality, life force, creativity, not being stuck in fight or flight, healing on every level of your life, etc. All the things that the energy codes are about. So many people tell me that coming to the Body Awake Yoga Retreat is actually what turned them on to 
uh, anchoring what this work is all about, actually really getting it and feeling it, etc. So what we're doing is yoga poses. We'll do a few of them, teach you the details, teach you what it does, what parts of the brain and the nervous system and the endocrine systems and the other regulatory and sustaining systems of the body are being activated by each pose. And then we do them and then we show each other how to do them and then we move on and do a couple more. And we just do that all day long. So you end up feeling fantastic by the end of the day because you've basically been in a bunch of healing energy uh, throughout the day while you're learning how to sustain that once you get back home. So that's in November. Uh, and then the last one that it really is the last one that I'm going to say is, is a level one. Because the short answer is reaching out to all of you around the world. And, uh, and I want you to know that, that I'm always interested in all the ways that I can get you uh, the basic foundational circuit building work. And so anytime there's a manifesting uh, and a level one on the calendar, I always want to let you know about it. Because it's how you actually step into a world where you're truly making a difference uh, in your life that the short answer... And the master class can't address because of the details that we get to go into in those courses. And so the next one is in Phoenix, Arizona in October, which is coming right up. The one after that is in Oakland, California, uh, in November 8 through 9. The one in Phoenix is October 11 through 13, and then uh, Oakland, November 8 through 9, and then in LA in March, March 20th through 22nd, and then Denver in April. So it's kind of giving you the next six months of, of what we're looking at uh, regarding being able to come into the coursework because that's when life really changes uh, for everyone. So uh, see, there's a whole second half here. So tune in next month for the rest of that. Okay. So welcome to the short answer. We're out of time now because we <laughs> spent all our time making announcements. Okay. So uh, I, I, we've been talking about some really amazing things here. And um, and I would, uh, just one second, would you, uh, don't go away, uh, would you bring the clock where I can see it? Thank you. I have to keep it short, right? So, um, so we're talking about energy in healing and how we heal and how energy, of course, has to be in motion in order for us to heal. And so as we're uh, doing that and discussing things, we're recognizing that we have all kinds of interferences in our lives based upon beliefs that came from experiences that we've had and conclusions that we drew that are now um, really directing our lives and keeping us from doing the things that we would really love to be doing because we're afraid to do them or we are too busy doing other things and overcompensating for all kinds of things in order to try to create some sense of wholeness or sense of goodness inside of us and building our worth or our esteem. And so what happens in that is life turns out not so good. What happens in that is we end up in, uh, in an out of balance uh, disharmony and we suffer. We build sy symptoms arise from that. Uh, uh, jobs don't work out. Relationships don't work out. Things just don't work because we're not in the flow. We're not in our core. We're not happy. We're not fulfilled because we're not living in our true self. We're living in our false com compensatory self, our protective personality, or our performing personality, the ego self. So it kind of boiled down to a thing that I want to share with you. This one thing that actually can change everything. And it starts you in a practice that allows your subconscious to recognize, oh, I actually don't have to be afraid. Oh, oh, I actually don't have to be doing all this other stuff in order to create some false sense of well-being or wholeness or value. And, and that one thing, that one practice is something that I want to share with you. So this is a very special short answer. And it's all because we're surrounded by an amazing... I wish I could turn the camera around and show you these amazing people that have gathered for this, uh, for this healing retreat. So all that energy is coming right here to you. And I want to invite you all to consider this. There is a feeling that you start to feel that you don't want to feel. And no matter what, you will do anything to not feel it. And the key is that if you would let yourself feel it, you would not plug in to all of the um, uh, sidestepping habits that you have created, all the diverting or the deflecting or the defending circuits that you have established, and then the patterns and the habits that follow that. You would not be outrunning some fear 
or outperforming some sensation of inadequacy or insufficiency uh, in some way. None of that would happen if you could start to train your mind to realize that everything is energy and it's just energy. And there is no energy that I should avoid if I ever want to experience myself as whole. If I want to experience my wholeness, I have to experience the whole of my being. Now that, when I say the word have to, it kind of gets a little scary, right? So you're going to have to feel this. You sit there and feel this and don't let yourself move. And I don't mean that at all. I mean, you get to feel everything because when you let that happen, it opens up something inside of your core mental body, which is anchored in your solar plexus. And when that solar plexus opens, the wisdom that is stored in your second chakra beneath it and the love that is stored in your heart chakra above it get to connect. And when wisdom and love connect, you are immovable, unwavering, unstoppable. You will walk through walls of, uh, of limitation that are generated from a filtering system that you've created as part of your effort to by step, to step around, to circumvent whatever this vibration is that you just don't want to feel. Now, we might at first say that this energy is fear or it is anger or it is uh, shame or it is guilt or it is doubt or it is something like that. Those are the kinds of things I'm talking about. But I want you to know that there's something underneath that that is the real truth. And so all of those kinds of states of self-doubt and guilt and shame and fear and all of that is what we conjure up in order to have an assigned meaning to or a story written about these energies so that we can validate not going there or we can justify not going there or we can uh, build enough steam to get away because everybody wants to get away from fear and nobody wants to feel self-doubt and nothing's going to let me feel guilty. You're not going to make me feel guilty or I'm not going to be ashamed about this, that. I'm just going to speak my truth. Those kinds of things are running our lives and they're keeping us from experiencing our wholeness. You get what I'm saying? You get that? Yeah. So all of that is superfluous. All of that is irrelevant. All of that is moot. If we really understand and get this, this is what will hopefully inspire you to allow yourself to actually feel this feeling that you're so afraid to feel. What's underneath that feeling once you allow yourself to feel that one? What's underneath that energy, that vibration inside of you is the most magnificent, loving experience that you could ever imagine. I was just sharing with someone over, uh, with a couple of people over uh, dinner or after dinner um, that, that actually what is underneath all of that is so magnificent, it is as if you are in the face of God. It's that big. That's how big your magnificence is. And if we had the circuits in place to allow ourselves to feel these feelings I'm describing right now as fear and guilt and shame and, and those, if we had the circuitry in place to allow ourselves to feel those energies, those energies would actually be contributing to a greater recipe. And they would be grounding and anchoring and integrative energies rather than these things that we're supposed to be avoiding at all costs that somehow we conjured up in our minds. And so as we allow ourselves to feel them, we build the circuitry for running those energies through our system. And then our cells become familiar with those energies, familiar enough that we're now not afraid of them. They're now not... Um, foreign to us to the degree that pff, we are just in operation to never have to go there. So, so here is the suggestion. 
ask yourself, what, what is it that I'm so afraid to feel? Because if I were to feel it and let myself feel it and insist that I feel it and stay conscious and breathe in that moment while I'm feeling it, consciously choose to take some breaths up and down the central channel, like you're certainly learning in this coursework or even in our online, you know, touch, touch points where we just say, hey, how are you doing? Happy month. Okay. Um, what's underneath all of that? is the greatest experience of self-love you could ever imagine feeling. It's tenfold bigger than the anxiousness that is generated because of feeling different, feeling left out, feeling abandoned, feeling like you don't belong, being the one who's trying to compensate for being abused in the, in the early life or in, the, in your life at this time, being the one who is at the effect of your job or the people around you or the circumstances or some family dynamic. None of that is true, but it might as well be true, right? Because we act as if it is true and we act as if it is bigger than us. And then we get caught up in trying to compensate for that and figure out a way to just get okay. The problem is we always find ourselves having to go away from all these things that keep us not okay. When all the while, if we would recognize that we're actually in charge of the whole movie, we're in charge of the whole thing, then we get to choose exactly where we want to be and exactly how we want to spend our time and exactly who we want to share it with and how we want to interpret life. And it gets to start unfolding in that direction because what's underneath all those energies that we're afraid to feel is the greatest, most empowered and magnificent individual that you could ever imagine finding, much less being. It's you. It's what you're made of. And there are no exceptions. That's why I can say it with so much conviction. I absolutely know that this is true about every single human being on this planet. It's what we're made of and it's what we're here for is the discovering of it, the recovery, the recognition, the emergence of this and landing our mind on this truth is the purpose of your life. So, so the short answer is actually a short question this month. The short question is, what is that feeling that you're so afraid to feel? And you know, in keeping with where I'm coming from, I'm not asking you to name the feeling because I assure you, you don't have a name for it. And the name that you have is limiting it. So feel the feeling. Would you choose to feel the feeling that you're so afraid of feeling? Choose to feel it consciously and intentionally by anchoring yourself in the anchor points like you know or if you don't know you can read in the book the energy codes that came out in March that's available for you to read and to learn so much about this work just between those two covers and by anchoring those anchor points at Mula Banda and squeezing the heart, the backside of the heart and constricting the throat and rolling the eyes and finding that central channel and breathing up and down it to stimulate the energy and get the prana moving to the point that you then allow your mind to entertain what is this feeling that I'm so afraid to feel and just in the privacy and the safety of your own home or maybe surrounded by some loving friends or maybe you come to one of these healing retreats and do it with a group where it's extra easy and extra safe and extra supported then you'll feel it. And the next thing you know, your circuits are going to be full steam ahead with, wow, you know, that really wasn't so bad. And I'm still here. So turns out it wasn't real because nothing real can be challenged. Only love is real. And you were made of that love. And I am committing my life, of course, as you know, to bringing every way that I can think of forward for you to be able to anchor and perceive that, to get into the crevices in some way. So I'm hoping that you asking this question and more importantly, answering it for yourself. But what is it that I'm so afraid to feel? And more importantly than me naming it, I'm just going to feel it. I'm just going to move in and feel it. So if you can't conjure it up on your own, don't worry. Life is going to deliver it to you. And probably all the sooner just because we brought it up this way. Right? Because your life is 100% in support of you waking up. And there are no exceptions to that. That's the only thing your life is for. is for you to wake up to yourself as a God presence on this planet. Full, whole, complete, and absolutely uh, magnificent. So I'm hoping that this will stir some non-thinking and rather some feeling for you this month. And I look forward to connecting with you. If you'd like to hear more about this, we are diving into this big time in the master class in the next few moments. So you can click on the link that's right on the page page where you're viewing this and join us for masterclass in just a few moments where we're going to dig in and answer a bunch of questions regarding the application of this and the how to's of all of it. So I hope to see you there and I'll definitely see you next month. Much, much love to you all. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You want to come here.